So there's a ton of new fragrances out there and I don't have access to every single one of them. But what I thought I'd do is put together a video of some of the latest releases that you might have interest in finding out about. Put it in one video and let you know about them in this video. So I've done videos on each of these most of these, not all of these separately, and some might be coming later after this video, but this is a video that you can tune into to discover some of the latest releases and find out what they're all about. So if you're curious to learn about some of the latest fragrances and what they smell like, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yeah, what are you guys interested in most that have launched already that you want to get your nose on and to smell to see if you like and end up buying? Put a comment down so I can find out. And yes, there are always new stuff coming out and I don't have access or the budget to get all of the fragrances, but I've got some here that I'm going to talk to you about. And as I said, some of these I have spoken about, some not. Some might have their own individual videos later and most probably not. So let's start with this one. This one will not have a individual video later but I might do a brand overview if I buy a couple of more of their fragrances but this is one that I purchased while I was in London it's from the house of Thomas Cosmala number four candy so this is uh, a very fruity tart juicy fragrance but there's an underlying dryness about it and kind of the ambroxan touch that's in the the fragrance from this house called Après l'amour number four is under here as well. In the end, it's lots of fruits. There's tart fruits, there's sweet fruits, but it's red fruits according to the notes. There's cherry, there's raspberry blossom, there's TR flower, and then there's vanilla, cotton candy, and caramel. And then of course, the uh, you know, kind of like that ambroxan thing that's in uh, the original. Well, I, I shouldn't say it's their original, it's their more popular fragrance called number four, Après l'amour. This is number four candy, and I liked the way it smells. I like it, and I'm waiting for it to warm up here in the Northern California for, so I can wear this because I feel like the tartness in the fruits and the freshness and then the muskiness from that ambroxan thing that's in here is going to be perfect in that kind of weather. Spring I think is going to be fine but I'm waiting for hot summer days to try this one. It might lean a little feminine because of the fruitiness and of course that pink cap over there but I felt like the bottle was fun and it smelled really nice while I was at Harrods so I bought a bottle. So number four candy from the house of Thomas Cosmala. Have you guys tried it yet? Do you enjoy it? So this next fragrance is from a designer. This is a relaunch of a very popular iconic fragrance from the 1990s. They have relaunched it as Angel Elixir. I did a full review of it and I was pretty um, fair to this fragrance when I did the review but the more I've smelled it the more I even hate it further so this is a complete absolute letdown in the, in the direction they've gone to to redo this fragrance I don't know the real honest truth but they probably did approach the original perfumer who created this Olivier Cresp and most likely he's turned down his you know magical creation, his iconic creation, and uh, they probably asked him if he can take it into a different direction. I don't know. This is something I'm just thinking, but what they've done to Angel is something so different than what the original Angel is. This is more of like a very mass, very, very mass white floral balm. That's, that's it. With some ambery touches and some vanillic touches and of course some woody uh, creaminess from the sandalwood. So they have a white floral bouquet they say. Orange blossom, ylang ylang and jasmine. I don't know. It smells like a lot of other feminine designer fragrances. That's what's really disappointing about it. Plus the price point is really really jacked up. Very disappointing. Let me know your thoughts on this one. Uh, put a comment down. Uh, I don't know if you love it or do you hate it. Uh, I'd like to find out who's in, into that, who is not into it, who used to love the original, who used to hate the original Angel. The original Angel is very, very iconic. I really, really think it's one of the most iconic fragrances, very historic, but that is so disappointing. So moving on to the house of Parfums de Marly, it's Valaya. I have a full review of it on the channel. So this to me, I feel like, um, I like the way it smells. When I first wore it, I don't know if I mentioned it in my full review, I have a full review of this, just like the Angel Elixir. I, when I first smelled it, I thought this is a very masculine fragrance because I feel like it has an overdose of ambroxan amber thing in here. But the more I wore it, I started noticing all the floral and fruity notes and then it became a bit more feminine. But when I first smelled it, I, all I got was ambroxan type of uh, notes. But in the end, I feel like 
they launched this in the clear bottle just like the uh, Delina, uh, not exclusive, Delina La Rose is in the clear bottle. So you know you're going to get something softer and not necessarily beastly like their other fragrances. So I don't understand why they did that with Falaya. Why wouldn't they launch something and then continue it down the line? But perhaps this is what they ended up with. This is what the Quintan Biche provided them, kind of on the lighter, more ethereal side. So they put it in this clear bottle. It is softer. And from the comments I've seen, some of you say it's so long-lasting. Some of you say it's not long-lasting. And this is one of the reasons why I rarely talk about performance because there's so many, you know, factors that go into uh, the wearing a fragrance. Maybe you're wearing it in an environment that fragrances are not going to last. Maybe you're wearing it in an environment that is going to last. Your chemistry, your body, what did you have to eat, your, your pH and everything. So there's all these factors that go into the performance of a fragrance and that's why I can't believe some people say it's really, really long lasting and other people say it's not long lasting at all. There could also be the fact that some of you that don't wear a lot of fragrances, fragrances will last a lot longer versus some of you that wear a lot of fragrances and those your noses are so used to it and then you can notice that the fragrance is disappearing faster but for me i think it's very ethereal it's light and musky it does also remind me a little bit of uh, fleur narcotique from ex nihilo it also reminds me a little bit of uh, um, um, neroli amara from van cleef and arpels and then also fa faintly the other day i pulled a bottle of um, dolce and gabbana's white uh, light blue for women and it kind of hinted at that as well speaking of Olivier Cresp again who created Dolce & Gabbana light blue for women so I think this is kind of a redundant release but some of you that haven't smelled those fragrances might really like it I like the smell I don't hate it but it is seeming very very light and ethereal so that's Balaya from Parfums de Marly uh, and then uh, this one I'm obsessed with really really obsessed with I've done a full review of this one as well this is Pistachio from Diaz & Durga um, only complaint, and I did not mention it in the review, is I feel like they're cranking out way too many fragrances. I, I don't know what it is about when a, a brand just keeps cranking out, cranking out, cranking out, and not just one or two fragrances a year, more like three or four or five or six. And I feel like Diaz and Durga is doing that, and I just was like, I have a hard time keeping up. I don't even want to go near their fragrances, but I'm, I'm really obsessed with pistachio. So I, I knew that this was coming out a year ago. It came out as a limited edition edition and never got to smell it at that time and then earlier this year while I was in London I heard it was you know making it as a regular lineup fragrance so when I was at Liberty of London the department store there was a Diaz and Durga section there and I asked and she had a sample to smell as soon as I smelled it it really was a, a great fragrance I loved so there's a fragrance from the house of Laura Mercier called uh, Creme de Pistache uh, which I used to really love, never owned a bottle, but I always sprayed it when I walked by the Laura Mercier section of Macy's, and I really, really loved it. And this kind of reminds me of it, but that one was more gourmand. Here we have a bit more earthiness, lots of patchouli here, which I like, and lots of cardamom, that spice, and then a bit of vanilla cream to give it a creamy edge to it. Very nutty, and then there's also the roasted almond, so it creates a, a nuttiness, but what I love about it is the combination of all of these notes with the patchouli here. Patchouli, pistachio, pistachio, patchouli, it's fantastic fragrance. Check it out if you don't know it. It's pistachio. I was gonna say it's patchouli from Diaz and Durga, but it's pistachio from Diaz and Durga. Have you smelled that one yet? Let me know your thoughts. So up next, going to the house of Goldfield and Banks. Uh, I've done a recent video with uh, Dimitri Weber of Goldfield and Banks. If you haven't caught that video, go catch it. We speak a lot about Island Lush, the latest release from this house. And to me, this one actually is even better than the last fragrance they launched, which is the Purple Suede. Once again, we've got a kind of a sandalwoody leather fragrance here, whereas the previous one was all about leather with aromatics, like lavender. Here we have leather with sandalwood, and I think the combination is great. Plus we have ginger, there's some zing and spice to it, and I think this is a really, really solid l release. And I feel like this collection is the Botanical Series, I believe that's what it's called. I think the fragrances are really, really great silky woods purple suede and now island lush really really fantastic and I like its intensity, its robustness, and the creaminess of the sandalwood and the spices, and then that kind of uh, very masculine leather note in here to create that you know woody, leathery concoction here with the, the, the two prominent notes. So it's a great release, Island Lush. Check it out. If you don't know that one, I highly recommend it. I think it's one of their best fragrances. In fact, I think 
the botanical series fragrances for me are some of the best, but they do have, if you caught that video with Dimitri Weber, that Weber, they do have a new fragrance coming out, I think in June, I think that's what he said. I think it's uh, coming out in June and it is a ginger focused fragrance, which I have smelled. And I actually smelled this one last year as well. Uh, and then when I met him again, when he came to San Francisco, I smelled it again and it smelled fantastic. So I'm looking forward to the ginger because I'm obsessed with ginger. And speaking of ginger, Eccentric Molecules, three fragrances. So uh, we've got the ginger here, I think. This is the ginger, yeah. This is Molecule One Plus Ginger. And then we've got Molecule Plus One tea, Black Tea. And then we've got Molecule One Plus Gaiac Wood. So here's the thing. When I shot my video of this one, I wasn't really digging the Gaiac Wood. Now I've really, really started digging the Gaiac wood. I don't know what happened, but I sprayed it again, overdosed myself with it, and I like the smoky, woody, lightly sweet, vanillic undertones that the Gaiac wood has, along with the uh, Ayasoe Super, which is cedar sandalwood. I think this trio is so super delicious, really great. In fact, I prefer all three of these, and then last collection with the Mandarin Patchouli and the Iris. I really never got into the Iris. I don't know what happened with the Iris one. For me, it was not really going anywhere. I've turned around to the Gaiac Wood. I think the Gaiac Wood is super fantastic. In fact, I'm shooting this and I'm on my way to the airport very, very soon. And I'm going to take the Gaiac Wood with me on a trip because this is, I think it's a great fragrance to wear every day on a trip, something like that. Uh, it's kind of woody, it's smoky, a bit sweet, vanillic. And I think this is going to turn heads. It's going to get attention. I think it smells super fantastic that way. So really, all three of them are great. Go catch my video on these three fragrances. But the ginger is super zingy and spicy. The black tea is a bit green and very cozy, comfy. And then, of course, a bit smoky as well. And they all three feature the ISOE Super Note. So you're going to get that uh, cedarwood, sandalwood kind of a combo with the th uh, these three notes uh, separately. Uh, big fan of the Eccentric Molecules fragrances. Absolutely love them and I think they're doing gr a great thing to launch these um, Molecule One fragrances with the addition of one additional note. I think that they're fantastic. Really big fan. Okay, so moving on to the house of uh, Electimus London. This is Gladiator Oud, uh, another fragrance that just launched from this house. And this is also created by Julianne Rasconet. I wasn't a big fan of the Vichy leather that came out late last year, but really loving Gladiator Oud a lot. I think there's a light hint, maybe a light hint of something as a reminder of his creation for Frederick Mall, but they're so different. For me, that's a little more ethereal and airy. Here we have a density, and there's definitely the addition of cumin here, lots of cumin, whereas that one might have a little bit of the dabbling of cumin there. Uh, and then this is a overdose of honey, and it doesn't have the fruitiness, whereas the other one, uh, which I think it's called why am I forgetting the name? Anyway, the Frederick Mall fragrance that uh, Julian Rascone created. Uh, Moon, it's called Moon. Yeah, it, 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 maybe there's some light reminders, but this is a lot more dense for some reason and not as fruity and the cumin is more spiked here. And there's the honey here, of course, saffron. Great fragrance created by uh, Julian Rascone. Again, I didn't care for Vichy leather. It was a bit too animalic and a bit experimental for me. I, I didn't care for it. Here, I get animalics, I get cumin, but I think this is a job well done for me. I really like this one. And I think definitely very wearable, especially if you like the idea of Oud. Gladiator Oud, this is from Electimus London. Let me know if you've sampled that one. Let me know what you think of all the fragrances I've spoken up so uh, spoken about so far. So we have a somewhat disappointing fragrance from uh, Givenchy for Men called Gentleman's Society. I don't really hate this one. Still, I don't really love it. It's not one that I would reach for over and over again. I think it's a solid release for people that like these kind of fragrances. It's cardamom, vanilla, narcissus, which is basically the daffodil flower. There's cedar, palo santo, and there's a trio of vetiver in here plus sage. So it's aromatic, spicy, a bit vanillic, floral, a bit kind of metallic and spicy uh, and creamy woody at the same time. But again, it doesn't really shout out come wear me kind of a thing, you know? But I think this might have a market. I think it might do well. I don't know, not for me. Again, I'm, an, I'm, I'm in between. I'm still not sure if I really love it or really hate it. 
uh, I, uh, I'm fine with it. I don't hate it as much as the EDT that came out in the series uh, back in 2017. I like it a little more. There's a little bit of a reminder of when you first spray it with the cardamom of La Nuit de, de la Homme from YSL. It goes away pretty fast though. And also the fact that this has Narcissus and H24 from Hermes has Nar Narcissus. They don't smell anything alike. So we'll see if this is popular or if it's going to have a following or if it's going to get a, a hyped. But Gentleman Society, are you a fan? of it uh, do let me know so I ended up buying a Killian fragrance because I like the idea of this fragrance and I think it's fairly decent I should have had this fragrance for my orange blossom neroli fragrance video I didn't have it unfortunately but can't stop love loving you I think it's pretty decent you know so this uh, is orange blossom mixed with honey and I feel like when you smell orange blossom there's a smell of honey in there I don't know if you guys ever noticed this and if you ever actually when you walk near a, an orange grove or an orange tree and you're smelling the flowers, smell it and see if you can identify that honey touch in there. So I feel like, I think it's a good idea that they combine these two notes because it amplifies one another. So the honeyed effect comes through more and you have kind of like an orange blossy, a blossomy citrusy honey touch in there. But there's vanilla here, there's a bit of frankincense, there's oak moss, there's paradisone. I, I kind of like it, but once again, it's not an oomphy fragrance, just like all by Killian fragrances for me. They don't have that beast mode quality that I want from fragrances. And I feel like they're made for yeah, I don't know, people that don't really like screamers. It's not a screamer, but it smells good. It smells really, really great for me. I really like the, the way it smells, and I would wear this one. Just I wanted a little more oomph to it. It's not, but let me know your thoughts on Can't Stop Loving You. Uh, have you tried it? Do you enjoy it? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you like the name Can't Stop Loving You? Are you kind of tired of their names? <laughs> Uh, let me know. Uh, moving on to the house of um, Jacques Fat. This is Vetiver Gris, this one right here. Do you guys know this one? So this is uh, a fragrance I got to smell last year. Uh, it's just now launching, uh, a brand new launch, but you know, they previewed it at Exxon's last June in uh, Milan, and that's where I got to sample it. And I also got to sample it over at uh, TFWA in September. So I knew it was coming. In fact, this is created by Jean-Christophe Herol, who created uh, Aventus, but I feel like it's a very wearable vetiver fragrance. It's got lots of java vetiver here. Vetiver, in addition to the java vetiver, there's hazelnuts, iris, there's bitter orange, symphonide, geranium, and neroli. So it's aromatic, it's earthy, a bit citrusy, nutty as well, but I feel like it's a solid vetiver fragrance. A bit more on the fresh side, not so dark, because they have another vetiver fragrance. Uh, I forgot the name. Uh, Lelo Den from this house. So they're totally different vetiver fragrances, whereas Lelo Den is darker, richer, more earthier. Here we've got the freshness uh, all around it, the bitter orange, and then also the geranium and the neroli in here. So give it a citrusy, kind of minty, rosy effect in the fragrance. So definitely, I think this one you can totally wear in the summertime and it won't weigh you down. So Vetiver Gris from the house of uh, Jacques Fat. This is a solid release from this house. So another release that came out earlier this year from the house of Thomas de Monaco is Gone bow this one right here have you guys tried this one so this is the third fragrance from this house and it's the most masculine out of all of them I feel like release one was unisex release two was on the feminine side release three is on the masculine side there's no rules wear whatever you want but Grand Beau to me is a very vegetal earthy vetiver fragrance with aromatics spices musk but it features loads of vetiver with angelica root so it creates powdery vegetal green bitterness there the juniper berry a bit sharp metallic aromatic touch and the ambrette creates a bit of a muskiness so it's got this fruitiness some light medicinal touch and then of course a bit of uh, booziness there very light when the when I mentioned the boozy fruitiness from the ambrette and then pine is in here as well but I feel like the angelica is so prominent uh, in here and then a bit of smoke resinous touch olibanum for me this also kind of reminds me of uh, French Lover so if you're a fan of French Lo Lover from Frederick Mall definitely check out Grand Beau they're different but then both of them utilize the angelica root, so you'll notice the familiarity there. So Grand Beau is pretty solid. I still prefer raw gold from that house. In fact, it's, it's such a 
popular, not popular, it's such a favorite of mine. I featured it in my Scent Club kit number four and I really, really love it. So we've got two fragrances uh, back to back created by Francesca Bianchi. First of which is Byzantine Amber and I believe you'll see a video very soon I did uh, with both of these fragrances in, the one, in one video. So, so we've got Byzantine Amber from Francesca Bianchi and then we've got Obsessive Devotion from her other brand Hedonique. So Byzantine Amber is a great amber, very smoky, a bit animal dry, spicy, and ambery for sure. So leather also is prominent here and on me got really smoky leathery which I really really liked. Great great fragrance from her once again. Now moving on to Hedonique on the other hand, so different from a lot of Francesca Bianchi fragrances. This is very floral but also very patchouli which is really really solidly beautiful. It has champaka, patchouli, there's iris, there's smoky leather, peach, ylang ylang, oak moss, sandalwood, bergamot and grapefruit. To me it smells fantastic. I think this is so different than a lot of other Francesca Bianchi fragrances I smelled. I feel like she's going in a new direction that's really really fantastic. So I'm really really digging Obsessive Devotion. Although I'm digging Byzantine Amber as well but for me Byzantine Amber from her own line does remind me of the DNA of our other fragrances. But for me Obsessive Devotion so different like the DNA is not there. It's almost like a, a brand new DNA, which is a, kind of a breath of fresh air here. So both of these are really solid releases, Byzantine Amber and Obsessive Devotion. Let me know your thoughts on those if you've sampled them. A couple more fragrances for you. We've got Mushu Maro from Uniki Luxury. So this is another intense fragrance from Uniki Luxury, and it's uh, kind of going into the uh, Japan theme and I, I feel like they've done a good job capturing that theme. I'm not sure if I'm really enjoying the fragrance myself so I think maybe I need to kind of dig into it and wear it a lot more. And I think there's a softness and cloudy kind of uh, soft very very gentle touch about it and I feel like it's coming from that marshmallow note in here. So it's got marshmallow, cashmere wood, there's milk, there's incense, there's caramel, musk, muguet, rose, praline, and vanilla. So it's definitely milky and I feel like you know I think the theme and inspiration is totally there. Just the combination might not be working too much for me. I think it's the marshmallow that's throwing me off. It's almost in between of creamy milkiness and a bit more like custard if that makes sense. Uh, more softer and not necessarily like liquid form but you know in the end you've got the rosy touches the muguet and then of course the vanilla uh, praline things coming up as well and for me it reminds me of a dessert like a Japanese dessert like um, sometimes when I have Japanese desserts when I go to Japanese restaurants they're kind of in between sweet and savory so I feel like that's what you get here so I'm still not 100% you know, really into the fragrance, but I like the idea of it, so I'm going to keep trying. So, Mashumaro from uh, Uniki Luxury, wonderful offering there. And then finally, Amouage's Guidance. This is the only one I have from the four new fragrances, and I like two of them. This is one of them. And Guidance is created by Quintam Biche. It features sandalwood, pear, osmanthus, vanilla, saffron, hazelnuts, rose, and olibanum. So once again, we've got a milkiness here, just like the last one, but more, more, more like custard in the last one here. we got definitely creaminess smooth creamy milky touch and then you've got the pear touch you got the rose touch for me this one was an instant love when I smelled it out of the bottle in, in fact I actually did first impressions from the samples and I feel like I got a better uh, better experience testing it at the store out of the bottles versus the samples if that makes sense so I hardly rely on samples I just need the bottles to test and it, it was like instantly like wow this smells super fantastic and I really really love it I like the pear touch in here and I like the rosy touch and the light toasted nuttiness of the hazelnuts and I feel like hazelnuts are not toasted but I think we're getting it from the olibanum note uh, anyway it's really delicious this is amouage and it's um, guidance and then I forget the the second one that I like from the collection it's the tall one with the the zingy fresh uh, citruses and the incense uh, search I think but anyway those are my thoughts on these new fragrances what are your thoughts on these fragrances let me know if you've tried these let me know if you've tried something else that's new that's launched recently and what your thoughts are put a comment down so I can find out other than that guys thanks so much for watching today's video if you have any questions or comments please list below please like this video please share it follow me on Instagram and Facebook Facebook and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.
So I'm highlighting this fragrance as well, even though it came out last year and uh, I'm just getting around to doing that. And I think this is super fantastic if you guys like gourmand fragrances. And it comes in one of the most beautiful, beautiful bottles. This is the House of Oud's Ruby Red. As you can see, a beautiful, beautiful bottle. These bottles are gorgeous. And this is a ginger balm with white flowers. If you like the idea of ginger, because it's got not only candy ginger, there's ginger blossom, and there's regular ginger in there. So it's spicy, it's zingy. It's got this fresh spiciness about it. And then it's meshed with lots of ylang ylang. There's tuberose, there's vanilla, there's woods and musk. I, it wears super fantastic. It is absolutely really, really delicious. And I think I highly recommend this one. There's something about the bottle though, um, the color and the way it's created is uh, really just reminds me of some kind of a dessert. I don't know what it is, but um, either way, if you haven't got your nose on the ruby red, I do highly recommend it. It did come out last year, but I'm just getting around to it. So I left it here as a bonus option. Anyway, thanks so much for watching guys. See you later. Bye-bye.